Yo 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 Charlemagne the guy. Peace to the planet. Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Hump day. Good morning. That's What's happening? Right, it's Wednesday. It's hump day. How you feeling? What's up, brother? Man, I'm blessed, black, and highly favored. How you feeling this morning, man? I am doing good now. I'm out in Atlanta. You know, any opportunity we get a chance to talk to uh, HBCUs or students or anybody to help, we definitely, you know, try to jump on that chance to do it. And yesterday I was at Atlanta University. You know what Atlanta University is? It's a community college, right? No, 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 no. It's a collective of three different colleges. It's a no. collective of Morehouse, Clark University, and Spelman. Because they sit That's so definitely close not no to community each other. College. No, definitely not. Historically black colleges. And yesterday we had a chance to talk to the students about everything. You know, when it comes to, you know, financial, generational wealth and uh, uh, therapy and mental health and all that. So it was uh, myself, Michelle Taylor-Jones, Rashawn Williams, and Latresa Ryan. Now, uh, those names might not sound familiar, but Rashawn Williams is a brother who... Uh, Help Nas get into VC, which was, you know, investing in Ring, invest base, investing in all these brothers. Smart brother came from Chicago. Uh, he told his story, and and all the people up there told the story. Your two sisters up there t- talked about where they came from. One was an attorney, one one is an investment person. Just talk about the struggles and where they were, and how we were just trying to tell the story and actually help students. So the students got about a good two hours of speech and talk and Q and A, and it was pretty dope until I left. When I left, somebody uh, got shot outside of uh, one of the uh, one of the areas outside. But uh, that wasn't at real your, scary because I mean that, it was that wasn't at your event though. No, it wasn't at my event. Yeah, but yeah, those yeah. schools are so close. If something happens there, it like it it shuts everything down. Because yesterday it was eighty five to eighty seven students were out and about. It was very even at campus, and I know some of those students were a little scared. But it's so crazy. They were it was. Tuesday, like it was like, oh, this happens all the, all the time, which, which is very frightening because it was it's people are getting so adapted and so, so just like it happens. There was a, the ghetto bird was in the sky, the helicopters were out there, and people were just chilling, like, which was very scary. But the students did get so shout to all those students in uh, Clark, Morehouse, and Spelman. Shout to all the students that go to HBCU, man. We really appreciate you guys. I can't wait to see what you guys uh, and, and- accomplish in the next. 20, 30 years. Yeah, and rest in peace to that young 20-year-old man who was uh, fatally shot. They say he was a sophomore baseball player from Chicago, so rest in peace to that young man. Did they catch the person? Uh, not as of yet. Not that I see, but uh, Front Page News is next. We're bringing in Angela Rye, uh, and I think this uh, Charlemagne came up with this idea, and I think it's great. You know, sometimes, you know, we need somebody who's in that, in bruh, the political, bruh, you know. Bro, we what? stupid. What? Okay, we stupid. All right. all right, and we need somebody. Say all that. We need somebody that knows what they're talking about when it comes to uh, you know actual news headlines. So that's why Angela Rye is here. Yes. Okay. Well, we're gonna do that when we come back. Mm-hmm. All right, Angela Rye, because we so stupid. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ V Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got front page news with Miss Angela Rye. Good morning. Good morning. Um, okay, so first let's talk about your experience yesterday at AUC. Um, you were speaking at uh, Clark Atlanta University yesterday, and we now understand that a 20-year-old baseball player, his name is Jatan Sterling, was shot and killed, and it appears it was off campus, but the news rattled where you are, were in B. Do you want to talk about it a little more? He just walked away. He that, that, definitely just he, walked away. That, that was clearly uh, something targeted, though, right? Well, I don't know. I don't want to make any um, any allegations or suggestions whatsoever. The only thing that we have right now is the name of the victim who was shot, 20-year-old baseball player. And also, um, I think it's important that we recognize that it says it was off campus. There have been a number of college shootings that have just simply increased. We saw earlier this year in Michigan at Michigan State mm-hmm. of our good friends, Jamel Hill's alma mater, right, that there was a, a shooting, a mass shooting. So when things like this get reported, it's really important that we talk about it. Don't know if it was targeted or not, but there was one victim and it appears it was off campus. Envy, you were there. Yeah, so sad, man. What's the student? Of that, brother. What the student saying, Envy? Anything? I mean, they just nah, scared. Nobody, 
Nobody knew what happened. They're just a shooting, and you see that had that, that helicopter and yellow tape. Nobody knew what happened. Damn, man. Rest in peace to that brother sending healing energy to his family for sure. And uh, I hope they catch that individual. They got to be mad cameras and everything around that place, right? Mm-hmm. Got to be. Gotta, we hope so. Yes. And so. What else we got? That is, yeah, I was just going to say that's sad. Sending so much love to his family. In addition to that, also sending love to Chicago in case you were hoping that Lori Lightfoot would win re-election. She lost the mayoral race badly yesterday, um, winning only 16.89% of the vote in Chicago. There is a runoff that will likely happen between Cook County Commissioner Brandon Johnson and the Chicago Public School CEO Paul Velas. So Lori Lightfoot is out. I feel like people in Chicago never really liked Lori Lightfoot like that. Though. I never heard good things. The only thing I saw good coming from uh, Chicago and Lloyd Lightfoot were all the memes. I didn't see <laughs> definitely <laughs> some memes. Mm. A lot of memes. She feel like she, she'll be fine. She feel like she can go back like and work in a church or something or like a department store. What do you think? <laughs> a department <laughs> store, bro. <laughs> <laughs> she do look like she uh, uh, somebody working a church doing something, right? Church, yes. Like welcoming people in. You, you yes. talking about an usher? A usher. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, she got Deacon Board vibes, but she Deacon also... Deacon Board, uh, there you go. <laughs> I don't know about department store unless it's giving K&G. Yeah, okay, <laughs> but, okay. But on a more serious note, mm -hmm. um, we also know that yesterday the Supreme Court heard oral arguments finally in two cases dealing with Joe Biden's student uh, loan forgiveness plan. As you all know, um, we were all hit so hard in the pandemic, and so... The um, administration continued to give people some debt relief, postponing payments. And then earlier or later uh, last year, Joe Biden um, announced a $400 billion relief plan through the Department of Education that would forgive student loan debt for people that earned under a certain income level. Those arguments were heard in the Supreme Court yesterday. A number of the conservative um, justices demonstrated that they were challenging whether or not um, the, the two different entities that are suing, um, some state solicitors general, as well as two private plaintiffs, if they had standing, if the injury actually really applied to them. And it sounds like so far the answer would be no. Um, the jury is still out, no pun intended, on three Supreme Court justices and where exactly they'll fall. But as you all know, they'll hear the oral arguments. Those opinions um, from the Supreme Court likely will not be released until June. So the kid get their student loans forgiven or not? Like this. We will find out in June. Oh, so 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 that it never happened. It was announced and then it got blocked and then it was announced and then as they move forward with the plan, mm -hmm. as you all know, conservatives take issue with anything relative to spending unless it's unless it's their tax cuts. And so this is one of those things that was solved because of this um, challenge in the Supreme Court. So you can't give uh, President Biden any credit for that or the administration, right? Like you know, things have to actually happen. You can't just say you're going to do something, even if it does get blocked. Sure. I think you can also give them credit for the relief. Like I talked about, the temporary relief that was mm -hmm. issued, I think, three or four times during the pandemic. So sure, you can give them credit for that. But also, um, you know, we got to go. <laughs> how, come, how come they don't make as much noise about being blocked as they did about, you know, actually issuing the student loans? When they when they when they talk about issuing the student loans, it's a big thing. It's all in the headlines. You know, it feels like their team knows how to push that out. But when they get blocked, how come they don't be just as loud about being blocked and pointing out who's blocking uh, the progress? Well, let's talk about that next hour because we got to go to commercials. Oh, OK. But get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hold us, hold, call us up right now. Phone lines are wide open. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne, Dizzy, what up? Are we live? This is your time to get it off your chest. I got an indoor pool, an outdoor pool. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. We can get on the phone right now here and tell you what it is. We live? Hello, who's this? It's Jay. Jay, what up? Get it off your chest. Don't, don't be calling up here talking tough, Jay. No, 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 not really, not really, man. This, this is for Envy, man. Envy, good morning, good morning. Morning, Envy, I'm gonna give you a latte of the day, man, because you be wearing them tight Dominican latte jeans, man. Them, them junk is over, man. Stop wearing them. I don't wear them for you, bro. I wear them for my wife. But if you think I'm sexy in the jeans, just say it. 
Nah, 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 we ain't doing that. We ain't watch, nah, we ain't doing that. I don't think so, man. I, 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 I agree with you, my brother. I think MB needs to stop doing a lot of Dominican things since he doesn't ever claim Dominican, even though we know he's Dominican, but he does everything Dominican Word. men do. Everything. Word, Lord. Word, Lord. But um, I just want to say one thing, man. I love y'all show, man. Keep doing what y'all doing, brother. Thank you, Jay. We appreciate I'll, I'll your service. Brother. He's too you young for you, MB. 40-year-old New Yorker. He's, Hello, he's who's this? Hey, this is Cammy from Canada. Hey, Cammy, get it off your chest. Yeah, I just wanted to shout you guys out. I've been listening to you guys since the beginning, and I'm here with my mom. Hey! Hey, mom. Hey, mama. <laughs> hey, and I'm just, I'm just a really big fan, and I just want to say I got two Charlemagne's books. And thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Where you calling Thank from? Thank you. We're actually from Montreal, Canada. She said Canada. You don't listen? No, I didn't hear that part. No. Oh. Well, I knew okay. he wasn't listening. I listen to the show all the time. He never listens. Well, salute oh, to Canada. Okay. Salute to Toronto. <laughs> she said Montreal, actually. Oh, yeah, she said. I was making sure y'all well, listening. That's this? why I said the wrong place. Yo, what is Cash? And what's going on, bro? Cash, hey, look, I just chest. got. Oh, man. I just got something to say, bro. I was trying to fill out for school, right? And I, I ain't know becoming a pilot cost damn near hundred thousand dollars. Oh, you? Well, I think it's crazy that we got a pilot shortage. We got a CDL shortage. It's hard to become a pilot. It's harder to get your CDL. Why is the government making it harder to do these things instead of making it easy for us? And then we could go ahead and start filling up these jobs. To me, it don't make no sense, man. I know $100,000 is a lot, but give us some grants. Give us some scholarships and we'll be able to pay it back, especially people that ain't got good credit. My brother, it's got to be. First of all, I want to commend you on uh, being a pilot. You know what I mean? Because that's not a job that a lot of people do. And I feel like pilots don't get the respect that they deserve. Like, I like to walk on planes and actually say hello to pilots. You know, sometimes I mm-hmm. give pilots, you know, gift cards to like, you know, Starbucks and different restaurants like that because they do a job and get us to destination safely and don't get enough credit for it. So I want to commend you on uh, attempting to be a pilot, but it got to be some grants and some scholarships. I think you got to dig a little deeper. It has to be, my brother. Yeah, it is. But, you know, the grants is only going to cover about 19000 FAFSA don't cover nothing for flight school. And everything else is either you're going to have to get a Sally May loan where you need a cosigner. And if you ain't got that, you messed up. Good thing I got a mom that, you know, she, she's going to help me. But other people don't got what I have. And I think that is so crazy, man. I think but y'all have a good day and y'all stay blessed, bro. No, you're absolutely right. But I don't want you to be discouraged, man. We need you in them skies, brother. But you also got to understand, it's like college. You have to actually learn how to do it. So you have to pay somebody. You have to pay instructors. You have to pay to actually learn. So it does cost some money. Like, I know people that, that tried. And, you know, you got to fly every week because you got to get a certain amount of fly time. And then a certain amount of class time. And it's like it's like going to college. Whether it's, you know, four-year school, two-year school, you have to pay that. But $100,000 seems excessive. But you, but you know, uh, it's plenty of people who think college should be free. I'm one of those people. You know what I mean? I, so I agree too. So, so so I get I understand what you're saying. Um, but you know, you, I guess you do have to learn. You do you do have to pay to learn some of these skills. But I, I do agree with him that you shouldn't have to pay so much to learn some of these skills because right. we need these people. Like we need pilots. We need and it's, right. it's a million people going to the airports right now all over the country, hoping that they have a, a, a pilot to fly their plane. You know what I mean? So we need these people. Well, that's the reason I'm not back because. Uh, my p- flight was delayed because the pilots couldn't make it. So exactly, yeah, right. point proven. Get it off your chest. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Right, because what happens is when you make it such a big headline, the story becomes Joe Biden forgave student loans, but the reality is they haven't been forgiven. <laughs> you know? And he knew it wasn't going to be forgiven. He knew it was going to get blocked. Exactly. So what what I hate about Democrats is they don't ever point out the people who are actually stopping progress. So then it makes me believe ever. But then it makes me believe they all in it together and they just BSing us. And they absolutely are. I totally agree with that assessment. Word. Thank you, Mama. Hello. Who's this? This chair for Rockville, Illinois, 815, baby. Why are you so excited, King? Man, we talk you on the radio for years, dog. How y'all doing this morning? Bless black and highly favored, my brother. Get it off your chest, brother. Man, I was gonna get a shout out to my wife. We'll get off my chest to my wife, man. We've been together in high school. It's going on 19 years, man. She's a beautiful queen. I got four beautiful boys. I love them to death. I, I, I do anything for my family, man. You and me That's both, black man. Yes, sir. One more thing. 
when I was an all high school on the next shows tonight. If we win, we headed downstate. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I wish the varsity team the best tonight. Well, good luck to you, brother. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. When we come back, we got your rumor report. We got to talk about Larsa Pip. She was on the Tammy Roman. That's the Tammy Roman show. Tamron Hall. Was it? She was on a Tamron <laughs> Hall show, and uh, she went viral. We'll talk about it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. What's happening? Your phone sounds terrible. Or your Zoom or whatever you on. From Atlanta. Yeah, I'm, I'm broadcasting from Atlanta, and the reason why is I couldn't get back because the pilots, uh, I guess it's a pilot shortage. Why you just saying take your ass to the radio time, station? So. Louis, if you got a studio for you there? Yeah, well, I'm going to do that tomorrow. I couldn't do it today. It was last minute, so, you know, you, that stuff has to be planned out. Mm. We'll start rumor report. All right, well, let's get to the rumors. Let's start rumor has this. it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name, or you gossiping, or you chatty uh, patty. I don't gossip it. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. Now, Lawson Pimpin was on the Tamron Hall show, and she was discussing dating Michael Jordan's son. Why would you date Michael Jordan's son knowing that it's been pretty clear that Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan didn't have this relationship people thought and certainly don't have it now? Mm -hmm. That's how Scottie feels. He's, he has a right to the way he yeah. feels. Yeah. I feel like I live my truth. I'm happy. I feel like we get along. He's my best friend. And so Marcus I, is your best friend. Yeah, I feel like we have a lot in common. But as I was saying, friend. you could date anybody in the world. But Why you know, date Michael Jordan's it, son? It, I didn't plan it like that. It wasn't like it was planned like that. I think we were just together a lot with our friends, and it just so happened. For me, being you know, married to someone that was an athlete or whatever, it's really hard. You get scrutinized yeah. a lot. People don't think you should have a life once you get divorced. Yeah. They think you're, once you're divorced, you're like done. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I wish I could act like I care about that story, but I don't because the reality is I doubt Scottie Pippen or Michael Jordan care about that story. I think it's one of those things that social media makes a big deal about, but the players involved, pun intended, aren't even tripping on it. Um, I don't know about that. Listen, if what? It, if it, oh, what? I was going to say, she talks about the, the age gap as well. She There's more. We literally just met at a party um, four years ago. Oh, really? And we were just friends. Did you and know we, who he was at the time? Well, yeah, we're, we have a lot of mutual friends. And so we're kind of in the same circle. So we've been around each other for like the last four years. He's 16 years younger. Other than the Bulls, like, what do you have in common? <laughs> we have everything in common. Like, well, I don't, I've dated guys that were a lot older than me. Scotty is 10 years older than me. Scotty's 10 years older than me. Yeah, you. so I don't really view age as, you know, you're mature, yeah, you're not yeah, immature. I, I don't, I, I don't feel like that determines if you're mature or not. Well, I, I feel think, like if you can go, if you can drink at 21, yeah, you, can, you can go to war at 18. Like, you know, there's different circumstances that I feel like age doesn't really um, determine your level of maturity. Damn, she said if you can drink at 21, if you can go to war at 18, then you can pop this poom poom. Okay. <laughs> okay. Listen, though, if it was actually Michael piping her down, that might be a little different. But Scotty not responsible for what she does because that's not even his wife no more. And Michael can't control who his son dunks on. And if she wants to sleep with the jump man's son, so what? Well, there's more. She also talks about uh, the couple getting blessings from Michael Jordan. Have you met <laughs> what? Michael Jordan and Juanita Jordan? And what did they say about the relationship? You know, I don't really, I mean, of course, I recently have met, you know, I've recently been hanging out with them. Um, when you're an adult, I think your parents just want to see you happy. You know, my parents want to see me happy. His parents want to see him happy. So you have their blessing. Yeah, I feel like we're great. Yeah, I feel like we've, you know, we've spent holidays together and it's good. We're in a great place. Man, they're not getting married. What reason would she have to get the blessing from uh, Michael and Juanita? Man. This is weird to me. I don't, I don't even know why this is an interview. No, I salute to Tamron all, but I don't even know why that's an interview worthy. I mean, not for her. Maybe for us. We would do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about for now, her. Also, our guy Kodak was in court yesterday, and this is what the judge said while he was in court. Authorities said he tested positive for fentanyl during a random drug test earlier this month. What is this? Unjust and not right about this situation. 
Black addressing the judge after the pretrial release technician testified he may have mixed up the samples between Black and another patient. There's no way you tested positive. We can resolve that by way of a hair sample. I understand. Judge Barbara Duffy then asking for a hair sample today to clear up the alleged mix-up, which Black refused, rather, choosing to check into the legacy rehabilitation facility for 30 days as part of his pretrial release. Yeah, so to break it down, uh, he had fentanyl, allegedly had fentanyl in his system. The judge said, if it was that error, give me a hair sample now. And he said, no way. I can't do that right now. I think MV just went up. But uh, I think that's exactly where Kodak should be. Rehab. Okay, stop sending people to jail for drug offenses. If you're going to send someone to a correctional facility, let it be a facility that can actually do some correction and rehab. Okay. Jail is not that. All right. You can get all the drugs you want in jail. So send these folks to rehab and get them clean and sober. That's what I think. And did they get the part of the audio where uh, Kodak asked the, <laughs> asked the judge for a Jolly Rancher? That was the best part, man. And I feel Kodak because Jolly Ranchers are hard to, hard to resist, especially the grape one and that watermelon, uh, that watermelon flavored one. All right. But when we come back, we got front page news and Angela Rye uh, will be with us during front page news to talk about what's happening with Joe Biden and these student loans, all right? It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. I think I'm back. I think I'm back. Can you hear me, Charlemagne? Yes, I can. I can hear all you. Right. Well, let's get into I can hear you over here, huh? Beijing. See, why you always gotta go there? Let me get, let me bring my light-skinned sister in. Miss <laughs> Angela Rice here for front page news. One day we can get past the colorism. I know we just on the other side of Black History Month. Damn. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so I think we're still talking this Biden student loan forgiveness plan, which is hanging in the balance after yesterday's oral arguments at the Supreme Court. Um, in the last hour, Lenard was asking if Biden can get credit for this or not. Um, and as you all know, um, in most instances where something is halted, you can't necessarily receive credit. But I think we should give an E for effort. The Department of Education's $400 billion student loan forgiveness plan would impact more than 40 million borrowers in this country, especially the more than, two, than 26 million who've already applied for the $10,000 in loan forgiveness. Um, in permanent loan forgiveness, by the way, because you all remember in um, March of 2020, when Donald Trump relied on the HEROES Act to temporarily relieve um, student loan debt as and, and Joe Biden did the same thing and he decided after receiving pressure from progressives to make this plan permanent. Six states since then, Nebraska, Missouri, Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, and South Carolina sued because they thought that, that Joe Biden was engaging in executive overreach as well as with the Department of Education um, violating separation of powers. Since then, um, of course, the oral arguments were heard yesterday in the Supreme Court and while it's not probable, it is possible that the whole case is thrown out on the technicality of um, injury. Some of the Supreme Court justices yesterday were questioning whether or not the six states and the two private plaintiffs have standing to sue based on the scope of injury. So whose fault is this? Whose fault is it that these kids won't be getting their student loans? So if the Supreme Court rules in um, their majority opinion that will likely come out in June, that the Biden administration did in fact engage in overreach, it will be the Supreme Court, which you know has a six to three mostly conservative um, majority. Yes, and you see the problem, and you explain that better than they do, because the problem I have with Democrats is their messaging always sucks, and it's just amazing to me how they can find ways to make the headlines huge in regards to getting rid of student loan debt to the point that everyone will run around saying, Joe Biden is getting rid of student loans, but then when it gets blocked, they're quiet about that. Like they should be loud about saying who and what are stopping the student loans. Let me let me push back. Um, there were several people, members of Congress, kids, uh, young people, college students outside of the Supreme Court yesterday protesting this. What you will recall is even when the Supreme Court took up Obamacare, the Obama administration didn't make a big deal out of it until the um, actual opinion is issued, which won't be until June. So I'm sure there are folks revving up to say this actually wasn't engaging in overreach. We relied on a provision that says that the Department of Education has the authority to make these decisions. I think that you have to give it a little bit of time. But why? I know that it's 
Mm-hmm. But why wait until it happens? They don't wait until it happens to announce that they're going to try to get the student loans forgiven. Like they, they don't wait until student loans are forgiven to put that headline out there. So why wait until it happens uh, to get blocked to make noise about it? Well, I think they wanted to ensure that borrowers could apply for this $10,000 in permanent loan forgiveness. And furthermore, again, I think they have made noise about it. Maybe you could, you didn't see it because you was watching Fox News. No, I do watch, I do watch Fox News <laughs> as well as CNN and, and, and MSNBC. But no, they do not. You, you know they do not make noise about no, I it think, like they I should. Think I, as an attorney, I would say that I think it would be errant on their part to say Listen, there they blocked this before it was actually blocked. The arguments were just. Can you say they're attempting to block it, just like they're attempting yeah. to forgive people I student do, loans? I do think I do think they should do that. I do think they should do that, and they can do that better. That they are attempting to block. These are the states that have sued. Apparently, your home state doesn't think anybody in their state needs student loan relief, which is surprising because it's one of the poorest states in the union. That's, Imagine that's, that. That's a fact. But you know, um, because what's going to happen here is all folks are going to say is. Uh, this administration just gave us more lip service. That's all they're going to say. They're not going to point to the actual people who are who who blocked the issue. They're going to put this on the Biden administration and say they just gave well, us more lip service. Where we another rely pro- on. another promise that didn't come through. That's what they're going to say. Well, you said earlier today that you stupid. Since I know you smart, I know that you will use your platform to tell people who is actually blocking this and what they can do to push back if they want their ten thousand dollars in permanent loan forgiveness. It depends. If I can do it without looking like I'm caping for Democrats, I will. I, you shouldn't look like that. You mm-hmm. should look like you're caping for people to get some type of restorative or reparative justice in this country. Yeah, so I'll do that. That How I'll about do. That? that I'll do. How about that? That I'll All do. All right. Well, thank you, Miss Rye, for checking in on our front page news. Tell them where to follow you, Angela Rye. Um, at Angela Rye on Instagram. And tell TikTok is banned. It's at Angela underscore Rye. And the same on Twitter. It's good to see Damn, you. Yeah, they don't let you be on TikTok? That's crazy. You, you've been no. doing it. You've been doing they, the stiff hips dance before it was popular. <laughs> I have TikTok, but I don't know how much longer any of us are going to have it here in this country. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. Now, let's open up the phone lines. Charlemagne's been talking about this. 800-585-1051. Now, a Chick-fil-A in Pennsylvania is banning anyone under the age of 16 without an accompanied adult. Let's talk about it. Does that make sense? Do you like it? Do you love it? And I've been seeing this a lot. We've been seeing this a lot. Like, a lot of restaurants are banning... Uh, teenagers and young kids from being in these establishments you know without adults because these kids be wilding they be cursing out employees <laughs> you know That's what true. i mean they be damaging property there be fights all types of stuff happening but now you have to have security for all these restaurants because who's going to control it you can't have the employees that are selling you know chicken and french fries and and shakes to to police the kids as well so I don't know if that's a good idea. And they used to do that I, I, in Virginia at the mall, and I hated it. I think security at all these establishments is is great. Like, like you think you're in Atlanta right now. Think about what's happening in malls like Linux, where they got metal detectors and all types of stuff, and shootings and everything be happening. Like, I think all of these public establishments should have armed security. I absolutely right. positively believe that. Well, let's talk about it. What's your thoughts? 800-585-1051. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about Chick-fil-A out in Pennsylvania. Uh, They want to ban unaccompanied minors. So what they're saying is if you're under the age of 16, 16 and under, you will be required to be in the building with an adult. All right. The franchise is saying that's because, honestly, you teens be wilding out. That's what they're saying. You be bugging. Y'all be wilding. Yeah, they come in there. They Uh, disrespect the employees. They say it's mistreatment of property. They say it's like, you know, uh, a lot of explicit language. Like, get my effing number one with cheese. You know And, you know, because a lot of them are doing it for the gram. They go in Chick-fil-A, talk to these people crazy. I go into any of these establishments and talk to these people crazy just because they be on their lives and everything else. Remember that video when, uh, remember the old video from New York when the dude pulled up to the drive-thru? He was like, yo, you with the big blood, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how these kids be talking to the, uh, these employees. But the problem with that is, I mean, now you have to have security because the, the employees can't police the, the age limit, what's your age and all that. And that's my own problem. So now you got security there and security. Are they properly trained to deal with people like yes, that? They're security guards. That's why I, I, I'll say this. I think that that's what they need to begin with. Like before I would issue a ban, the customers under 16 without an adult. I would pay for extra security and I'm tired of us being so cheap, especially at these establishments that we know are making mad money because when it comes to the safety of not just employees, but uh, customers, 
you, sh you shouldn't cut corners on that. Like all of these establishments need security. Fast food establishments, the mall, churches. We see what's going on in this country. You in Atlanta right now. You was at, what, what's that place called? Uh, Atlanta, uh, uh, Atlanta University. That's the combination of Clark, Spellman, and Morehouse. All right. Somebody got shot and killed there yesterday. Rest in peace to that 20-year-old brother. All I'm saying is any place where there is a large amount of people, there should be trained armed security guards who know how to handle situations when situations get out of hand because them kids wouldn't act up if they saw armed security in these establishments yeah but in a situation like this you're a freshman you're a sophomore you're 15 16 years old after school you go to fast food because that's all you can afford you go to mcdonald's you go to chick-fil-a you go to burger king you go to these places but now i can't go inside and i'm starving i'm hungry that's why you should have you security that those kids that's my point that's why you should have security i mean most of these it's going to probably go back to what we were doing during covid where people just go through the drive through anyway but if they do not i, I think the banning on the kids is, is, a, is a bit extreme because i feel like they haven't tried any other methods i think they should have armed security in these establishments because you're talking about the 16 year olds that know how to act you know what I mean? And it's the 16 year olds that don't know how to act who mess it up for the ones who do. You know what? You're right. And I'm, I'm just going to tell this, this quick story. And, and this just made me think about it when you said it. My wife, uh, if you don't know, was in McDonald's when we were in high school. And she was trying to get herself a number two. And she got into an altercation with these other group of girls that were, were trying to bully her and pick on her. Security at McDonald's threw all of them out. The girls wound up jumping my wife and slashing my wife face 60 like 67 times if you have a look on the left side of my wife's face you'll see the a, a small mark on her face where she was sliced so yes i i agree i you know what i, I i'm bugging yes I, actually absolutely positively these these establishments should have security so they yes, jumped absolutely. her out they jumped her after they got kicked out like somewhere else yeah they kicked her out of the mcdonald's on jamaica avenue and then she got jumped outside damn but it could have happened inside. I mean, it, we don't know what would happen. But yes, you're right. These these establishments should ha should have security because they are making enough money. It's not like these 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 huge establishments are not making money. They're not mom and pop stores or mom and pop situations. Yes, they should have security. And, and you you're know, absolutely I, right. And I was in I was in uh, Atlanta a, a, a couple of weeks ago because my daughter had a cheerleading competition. And like you know, even the security that I was with was they and they actually referenced. Uh, you did a car show in Atlanta, right? Yes. They referenced one of your car shows. I think it was at the Georgia Convention Center where the cheerleading competition was at. And they were saying how when black people have events at stuff like the Georgia Convention Center, security is nuts. Like they make y'all hire a bunch of security. They lock certain yep. doors so yep. people can't just come through. But at that cheerleading competition, it was the wild, wild west. You know, people could come in from all different doors, all different directions. Mm -hmm. And they were saying how dangerous that was, especially in this era where you see all these mass shootings. So yes, yeah, these are, these establishments and these venues have to pay for top-notch security. They have to. Yeah, and, and you're right because I have to pay for extra security more than that cheerleading event, which probably had more people than my car show. But it is, you know, it is what it is. But let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Sydney. Hey, Sydney, what's your thoughts, Mama? Man, I'm a school teacher. I've been one for six years, okay, and I've taught seventh through twelfth graders throughout these six years, and. You got to do what you got to do to keep the peace. If children don't have expectations or rules to follow, they're just going to learn it the hard way when they get older. That's right. Like, so if Chick-fil-A had to do that, they had to do it. Clearly, there must have been some complaints. Something could have popped off and nobody reported it. And the management is just trying to handle it the best they can. Qu question. My, my, to get their kids under control. Would you, feel, would you feel safer as a school teacher if y'all had armed security in the schools? <sighs> Sometimes. It'd be some days where I'm like, damn, is this enough? Because some, some mm. things have definitely occurred. So I'm not going to put it out there or nothing because hey, this is my school. But um, huh, some things have occurred. And I'm like, oh, I wish I would have some know me. I would have been able to <laughs> at least defend myself. Jesus. But the first, I mean, whatever, we got to run. The first thing I'm going to think about is my kids, honestly. And I'm not... Just saying that I'm gonna get them out the building before I might get myself. Out. And, and, and I'm with you, but you shouldn't even have to be in that situation, man. We have to give right. these teachers support. We have to give these 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 fast food workers some support. Like if you work at an, if, you, if you're somewhere where it's a mass group of people, we have to have armed security or more something. Yes. Like something has to change, yo. And, and I just wanted to say in. this before you guys uh, kick me off real quick. 
I just wanted to say mm-hmm. this. Um, recently at our school district, they are not allowing students or parents, guardians, whoever, to come in if you smell like super loud bud, right? And I had a lot of my students complain about that because they're saying, oh, my parents smoke before they drop me off and blah, blah, blah. And this just goes back to my point. Parents need to set an example for their children. You do what you do, what you do, what you do in your household. But when your kid goes out into the world, there are expectations. I just have to put that out there. Man, that is well, so not funny. Only that, ma'am. The parents smelling like loud. <laughs> oh, my God, you know, sir, you have no that's idea. That's against the law. You're not supposed to drive high. Uh, well, hey, man, that's what these parents are out here doing and making it no- and normalizing it to their children. So when their kids come in my classroom, <laughs> high as hell, asleep and asking me for chips, how are they supposed to know what they need to know to get the SAT score? Like, you know, it just sucks. It, and it all starts at home. So I'm coming for the parents this morning. I say chips for Thank you, Mama. Time. I'm with you. Okay. Thank you. I am disgusted that these parents Could aren't taking imagine? edibles. Huh? <laughs> I am just disgusted imagine? these parents aren't taking edibles like real adults. How Your dare? kid comes to school high, and so, you say, did you smoke? No, my, my dad did, or my mom man, did. Man, that is crazy. You, you got your kid smelling like the loud pack because you smoking. You done gave your kids a secondhand high. They asking the teacher for snacks because they got the munchies. <laughs> this is crazy. 800-585-1051. We're asking, you know, a Chick-fil-A in Pennsylvania is banning kids under the age of 16 unless an adult is accompanied with them. So let's talk about it. Do you agree, disagree? It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. I know it, man. I know it, man. Call me. Get your opinion to the Breakfast Club Top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, 800-585-1051. Shout out to everybody in Atlanta. I'm out in Atlanta right now. Uh, there was a pilot shortage yesterday, and I couldn't get back. So, Horrible. Uh, I'm here. I'm here. So, we're asking... Uh, Chick-fil-A in Pennsylvania is banning unaccompanied minors. So if you're 16 and younger and you're not with an adult, you can't come in. Is that good? Is that bad? At first, I was kind of upset with it. But now thinking about it, I get it. Yeah, they should have some type of security there. And to make sure you kids ain't wilding out, because even when I was a kid, when we went to those stores, yeah, we would talk disrespectful sometimes. And kids would fight in McDonald's and those places because that's where you would go after school because that's usually what you can afford. The $2.99 meals, the $3.24 meals, the French fries for 99 cents. That's where you would go. So we're asking, what's your thought on it? Let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? This is Ted. Ted, Ted, what's up, brother? What's your thoughts? Man, I thought, I think Chick-fil-A bugging, man. Because why are you going to ban 16-year-old now for not being um, in Chick-fil-A without an adult? All the crazy people doing stuff in restaurants are always adults. Look at that lady you give um, Donkey the Day to, Charlemagne, who drove a car inside um, a Chick-fil-A because she didn't get her cookie or whatever. That was a Popeye's. Uh, that was a, see, Popeye's. What about the Florida man who pulled a gun on um, somebody for not getting whatever, you know, it's complete order. Those, he wasn't under 16. These are all people over the age of 16. So I think Chick-fil-A bugged it. No, no, listen, my brother, I'm with you. I don't think that the ban is right. I think that they should have security. I think the ban is them trying to save money on not being able to hire security. I think all of these fast food restaurants should absolutely positively have security. You know, like, like uh-huh. you know, Envy, you get you you in the weed business. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you, you got your... You Call it cannabis, sir. Yeah, you're in the cannabis business, and I'm, I'm, I'm in the cannabis business as well. You know that when you have these dispensaries, you have to have security at these dispensaries. Correct. So it should be the same thing for any establishment, especially fast food establishments, especially schools. If there's a large group of people that congregate these places, they should have security. You have to have it in 2023, man. You have to. But also, it's 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 close to the uh, hubs, so it's close to the train stations where schools are. That's probably where they have the most of problems. Where you're on where the train stops, whether it's Jamaica Avenue or the, the Atlanta Mart or whatever it may be, where uh, there's a large group of students. That's what has to have the majority of the problems. Yep. Let's go to another caller. Hello, who's this? Hi, my name's Mr. Puma. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Appreciate What's your thoughts, brother? All right, um, I don't agree with that uh, being a company with adult thing, but. Uh, I'm from Detroit, and it could be worse. You could uh, have to get all your food through plexiglass. All the fast food restaurants in Detroit have that bulletproof glass in it, just like the bank. So imagine getting your two-piece and a biscuit through a hole in plexiglass. I'm not mad at that, because it's going to come to that, because nobody ever thinks about the employees in these situations. Like, they need to be protected. I'm not mad at that either. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what the world's that's coming to, brother. Nah, I seems like jail, though. I hated that as a kid. Like, you go to a store, you got to order through the through the glass. Ma- majority of the time, it was either the Chinese food spot or sometimes the bodegas. And I used to hate it. You got to yell through it. It just didn't seem natural. It, ain't, a, it, it right? ain't about you, though. It's about the safety of the employees. Because guess what? Uh, what's going to happen is, just like how you can't get home right now because there's no pilots to fly the planes, <laughs> ain't going to be nobody working at these fast food places. But they probably don't care because they're going to have AI and robots working there anyway, so... True. Hello, who's this? Hey, what's up? It's Envy? Yeah, what's up, bro? Who's this? This T. Good morning. Peace, hey, morning, man. What's your uh, thoughts? Man, I don't blame Chick-fil-A. I mean, it's a liability thing. Not only that, like like you were saying earlier, the disrespect. I mean, I know it, it places an inconvenience on those parents that do have responsible teenagers, but it's like, you know, one apple, one bad apple will spoil it for the bunch. That's right. I don't blame Chick-fil-A. Send their parents with them. But I, I will say, T, um, I don't think they should ban. I think they should have security first. You know what I mean? And then if the security doesn't work, then I can understand the ban. I think the ban is just them being cheap. You know what I mean? Because they don't want to hire proper yeah. security. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just going to say that. And I, honestly, I don't want the, their added security to be added to my, my uh, number three or my number four meal. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta you're gonna look at the receipt. Security. You're gonna look at the receipt and see the security. Uh, the security. Exactly. I don't need that gratuity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but that's true too. Who's gonna have to pay those yeah. costs? So, like exactly. you said, they're gonna have to add a dollar to your 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 meal or fifty cent to your meal. And you know, a lot of times, especially being a kid, sixteen years old, you you plan to the penny. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't mind that. I don't mind that for any of these establishments. Put it like this: all the money that we spend in taxes. If they started putting that tax dollars towards these schools, having metal detectors in these schools, having security, because you can't just have metal detectors in the urban schools, the black schools. You know what I mean? You got to have you got to have uh, metal detectors everywhere nowadays because of all of these mass shootings. If if, if, if I got to pay extra, which we already are, by the way, with our tax dollars, if I got to pay extra, I would love for that extra in taxes to go to security. Yeah, I get it for the kids' school, but I'm not paying. My tax money ain't helping Chick-fil-A. Well, you shouldn't my be eating Chick-fil-A, fast food, my, no way. He, he, you need to my, be eating my, more healthier options any damn way. Chick-fil-A is not fast food, sir. I know it, it feels like it isn't, but it is. You know, and I got to watch my cholesterol. My cholesterol is a little high right now. I got to get my... Well, what's the moral of the story? I'm trying to get my cholesterol down. The moral of the story is we need security in all these public places. That's the moral of the story. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. What's going to happen is there's going to be no more fast food workers working at these places. It's going to be all artificial intelligence and RoboCops. And I guarantee you little punks won't try no RoboCops. Okay? I bet you when y'all walk into a goddamn Chick-fil-A and it's a Terminator 3000 standing behind the desk, you know, big as Arnold Schwarzenegger talking to you in that accent, I bet you won't try him. Jesus. All right. Well, when we come back, we got your rumor report. The Dreamville Festival has been announced and it looks like it has to be. It's going to be a stop for the summer. So we'll talk about it. What artists will be performing? So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, man. Drop on mm-hmm. the clues bombs from Miguel. That's a classic record right there, boy. Yep. We, I'm surprised that uh, the radio playing that in 2023, though. Boy, <laughs> they, wow. they would have got Miguel out of here. For that record, if you'd have dropped that now and it was new, but you know it's a classic. Yes, it is. Have That's you right. guys? Have you been traveling? Have you guys been trying to travel out there? Have y'all seen how crazy and expensive flights are? Have y'all seen it? I don't, flights, I don't know if you've flight, flights you've been always been expensive. Sir. Nah, not like now. Like they almost doubled and tripled. And I'm not talking first class or Delta Comfort. I'm just talking regular economy flights are through the roof, and I don't know why. Well, you got it. You know what I mean? Just tell you know, just cut back on the just for me, just for men, or you know, whatever that. What, what you be wearing? What you be putting your bed? What's the brand? What, what are you talking about? Well, just cut back on that. You know what I'm saying? And you'll have a little bit more money for plane tickets. That's all. That's all. Why is everything about me? Why? Well, listen, the, the uh, last uh, couple of days has been about me smoking hookah, and you always want to talk about no, my bed. No, I don't know so, what's wrong so, with you. Saucy, saucy Santana made it about you smoking hookah. I don't mind you smoking hookah. You know what I mean? I just want you to be who you are. You know what I mean? Because if you're not being who you oh, are, boy. then what you're doing is cultural appropriation. You know what I mean? You either Dominican or you're not. You can't be Dominican when it's convenient to you when you DJing parties in the Heights. You know what I mean? Or DJing these Latino parties. But then when you're not and you're with the black people, you want to be black. You got to pick a side. You know, I haven't even heard you say you're Afro-Latino, have you? No, I'm See? not. I'm exactly. black. I'm, I'm black, black. And you know what we got to stop, too? We got to stop changing Wikipedia, right? Because people think Wikipedia is legit. 
So yesterday when they announced me, they say, yes, you know, he was a Dominican landscaper and then turned out to be a DJ. I was never a landscaper. You were a gardener. I, gardener, not landscaper, a gardener. same thing. <laughs> I'm not a gardener and I'm not Dominican. I don't know why you choose to lie, but I would like to tell people this. Uh, today, mm -hmm. 12 p.m., tickets go on sale for the first ever Black Effect Podcast Festival, hey. okay? Hosted by myself and my good sister, Jess Hilarious. It's happening April 22nd in Atlanta, okay? And uh, tickets go on sale, 12 p.m., all right? You can go to blackeffect.com slash podcast festival uh, to learn more. We got a lot of dope podcasts that are going to be there because, you know, the Black Effect podcast, we have a variety of podcasts uh, on the platform. So 85 South Show, Carlos Miller, Chico Bean, DC Young Fly, they'll be hitting that stage. Uh, Mandy and Weezy of Horrible Decisions, they'll be hitting that stage. You Being in Atlanta, you know we got to go get uh, Baby Jade, okay, mm -hmm. uh, DJ Scream. And my man Banks for the Big Facts uh, podcast, all right? And uh, Michelle Williams, she'll be there with the Checking In podcast. Giselle and Robin from Reasonably, Be Sh Reasonably Shady, they'll be there as well. So Saturday, April 22nd in Atlanta, um, the first ever Black Effect podcast festival is happening. Tickets go on sale today at 12 p.m., all right? So go to blackeffect.com slash podcast festival to learn more. But get your tickets at 12 p.m. today, all right? That's right. And Louis V, if you're listening, I know you're listening. I'm going to see you in a little bit. We need to plan an after party. Let's do an after party, Louis V. Oh. You know Charlemagne don't come out after 9 o'clock, so me and you, Louis V, could do the after party. Yeah, I won't be in no after party, but Louis V will be providing the soundtrack for the uh, Black Effect podcast, podcast Festival that day as well. Yes. All right. Now, when we come back, we got rumors. We're going to tell you about the J. Cole Festival, the Dreamville Festival. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the guy. We are Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Dreamville Festival. Rumor has it, rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is the Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. Now, the Dreamville Festival uh, lineup was announced. Now, the pre ticket sold out already in November before the lineup was dropped. Now, let's talk about this lineup. Charlemagne, let's see if you're excited. I'm 44 Ari years Lennox. old. Ari Lennox. Drop on the clues. City Girls. Lennox. Oh, come on now. Now, see, hold on. Now, see, now, see, I didn't know you was coming like that, man. Now, I didn't know you was coming like that. Ari Lennox and How City you Girls. You know what? You, you, little, got, you got a whole little, family. Little Dirk. Usher. Oh, man. Key Glock, Sean Paul, Day One. I don't know who Day, day One Day Two. Is. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean the day the, like that was day one. That's I realized Friday, that after you said day two, right? But you didn't say it like that. You said it like day one is performing. I had no idea who that was. That's day one. Okay. Day two, Burner Boy. Man, wow. Mario, Waka Flocka, Boss, oh, Gorilla. I like this. I like Jid, this. Summer Walker. Oh man, I like this. J Cole and Drake. This is the perfect balance of Ratchet and R and B. I like this. I like that. Yeah. I like that lineup a lot. Drop one of Clues Bombs for Dreamville Festival. They paying attention. Whoever put that line, whoever curated that lineup is really, really, really paying attention uh, to what's happening out here in this world. Yeah, Earth Gang will be performing. Uh, performing Love Earth uh, Gang. Key Glock. Yeah, so it's going to be pretty dope. Love Key Glock. Wow. That's now, a this, lineup. This is dope, too. That's a dope Chris lineup. Chris Rock. You know, real Chris quick, Rock though, you know what's also mm -hmm. interesting about that lineup? A lot of those people, a lot of those people, a lot of those people get radio play. A lot of those people don't. So it's a nice balance. You know what I mean? Well, majority of them don't really get. Well, I mean, you're talking Earth Gang, Key Glock. Uh, yeah. Waka Flocka. Oh, but then you got J. Cole, Summer Walker, Burner Boys, your Glorillas. Oof, it's going to be dope. That's a dope. That's a ph phenomenal lineup, actually. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, uh, also, Chris Rock, he's doing his first actual live Netflix comedy show. And he will be talking about the Will Smith uh, Oscar slap in his special. This is going to happen March 4th. And this is the first time this has ever been done. Yeah, it's the first time that uh, Netflix has done, done a live comedy stand up special. Um, I've seen uh, Chris's set. Uh, I saw him last year at the Garden with uh, Dave Chappelle and Kevin Hart. And then I saw him, I think, was that last month? I think last month uh, in North Charleston at the North Charleston Coliseum. And, you know, I really do hate that we live in an era where people go to comedy shows and then report on what somebody is going to be talking about. You know what I mean? Like I saw, I was, I was reading, I actually was reading uh, Jasmine Brand yesterday and I saw how whoever whoever uh, reported it literally was 
trying to retell what Chris Rock was saying from the stage. And I just think that's whack. Like, it's a reason when you go to these comedy shows, they take your phones <laughs> and, they, and yeah. they lock your phones up. Like, these people are working out material and you want to be watching the show and be surprised when you hear certain things. I think that takes away the element of surprise, you know, from comedians. And um, I think that's whack. Very yeah, well. that's going to be in Baltimore. He's going to be taping that in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think I might drive up there to check that out. I would love to see that live. So Chris Rock and, and his people, you know, I mean, Chris Rock is a friend to the room, so I might need two tickets, Chris. I'll buy them. I'll pay for them. I just want to go support. That's my cousin. But you can drive to Baltimore to go see Chris Rock, but you couldn't drive to Baltimore to go to Jess Hilarious' birthday party last weekend? Wow. Kobe Bryant, wow. uh, his family gets $29 wow. million dollars, uh, in the settlement case over the helicopter crash. Now, Bryant had sued the county several months after the crash, alleging that the county sheriffs and fire department employees used their personal phones to take and share those photos from the crash. So the family is uh, getting nearly $29 million, and I think it's well-deserved. Man, that, that's, that, they deserve every penny, every dime. God bless Absolutely. the Bryant family. Absolutely. And that is your rumor report. They should get all that money, all that money. Yeah, I don't. It, it, it's just always bugged me out. Like, what kind of level of like, not, not just groupie, but you know, how inhumane are you to want to share somebody's remains? You know what I mean? And they're, and they're only sharing the remains because it's the late great Kobe Bryant, you know, and his Correct. daughter. So it's you know a super celebrity attached to it. But man, is that that what we've come to in our society? Is America that obsessed with celebrity? Yeah. Yeah. So sad. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. Like I said, now who are you giving that donkey to, Charlemagne? Uh, I need Rupert Murdoch, chairman of uh, Fox, the Fox Corporation, to come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with him this morning, please. All right. We'll get to that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Our audible pick of the day is reinvent your life. Mel Robbins is back to help you dream big and take more control over your life. Start listening when you sign up for a free 30 day trial at audible.com slash Breakfast Club. This is a miracle. There is no question that there are problems in this country between police and community. Yes, you are a donkey. To the latest on that police killing of a black man. Now to new developments in the deadly spa shooting rampage. Uh, and yesterday was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. And so we are in a state of emergency. Okay, white supremacist violence is and always has been the number one threat to our society. But I'm also very proud that my wife is white. My wife is white. Amen. The Breakfast Club, bitch. All right, Charlene, please tell me, why was I your donkey of the day? Uh, donkey of the day for Wednesday, March 1st, uh, goes to Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch is the chairman of Fox Corporation. And I, I don't know if y'all know, but there's a $1.6 billion defamation lawsuit against Fox News right now. And Rupert Murdoch acknowledged in his deposition that some Fox News hosts did indeed endorse false claims that the 2020 election was stolen. Yes, Rupert Murdoch's remarks were made public in a legal filing as part of Dominion Voting System's $1.6 billion lawsuit against Fox News. I mean, we knew this already, but damn. Now, Rupert Murdoch rejected that Fox News as an entity endorsed uh, former President Trump's election of lies, but Rupert conceded that Sean Hannity and Jeanne P P Pirro and uh, Maria Bart. Or terror, I don't know how to pronounce her name. And former host Lou Dobbs uh, promoted the falsehood about the presidential contest being stolen. Last week, some text between uh, Tucker Carlson and fellow host Laura Ingram revealed that Fox hosts knowingly lied about the 2020 election. If you haven't been paying attention, uh, what's, what's the news report? Red, do we have the name? Who? Oh, let me see. What? Oh, let's go to ABC News for the report, please. Tonight, we are learning Fox News boss Rupert Murdoch said in a sworn deposition that any Fox News executives who allowed lies about the 2020 election to be broadcast, quote, should be reprimanded or maybe got rid of. In the days leading up to January 6th, Fox broadcast lies from Donald Trump's lawyers, Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell, that Dominion voting machines in several states were being manipulated by shadowy foreign entities, even hinting dead Venezuelan dictator Hugo Chavez played a role. Dominion is now suing Fox News for defamation. And their court filings reveal top Fox hosts like Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram privately trashed the Trump team. Sidney Powell is lying, by the way, Carlson wrote to Ingram. It's insane. Ingram responded, Sidney is a complete nut. No one will work with her. Ditto with Rudy. It's unbelievably offensive. Our viewers are good people and they believe it. Sean Hannity saying, I did not believe it for one second. 
And the court filing makes clear that after the riot at the Capitol, Murdoch was through with Donald Trump. Writing in one email, we want to make Trump a non-person. I, I just thought about something. Why do people squint their eyes when they can't hear? I couldn't hear Red, and I started squinting at him because I couldn't hear him. That don't make no damn sense, does it? No. Okay. All right, back to the matter at hand. Wow, Fox News. Wow, Rupert Murdoch. I mean, damn, you just secured that bag for the Dominion voting system, okay? They suing for defamation, and Rupert Murdoch uh, admitted that, yes, my host knew the election being stolen was a lie, but they pushed it anyway. Wow. Can we hear some of the lies they told on Dominion voting system? Can we hear that, please? Texas rejected using Dominion software three times, raising concerns that the system was not safe from fraudulent or unauthorized manipulation. The election results in several battleground states continued to be under intense focus as allegations of voter fraud are being investigated. Whether it's Dominion, uh, EBS, whatever the company, voting machine company is, it is the most ludicrous, irresponsible and rancid uh, system. This is an assault on the core of a democracy. Many Americans do not believe that this election was fair. I feel that way. Dominion voting machines, they were used in all of Georgia's 159 counties, a state with a razor thin margin. That on top of the fact that uh, Rupert Murdoch admitted his hosts were lying. How much of that 1.6 billion you think they're gonna get? Huh? How much you think? Huh? Cause Fox got it, all right? Uh, what is the punishment when hosts intentionally and purposely lie to viewers? When you're Fox News, the answer is nothing. Nothing's going to happen. OK, nothing's going to change because we live in an era where nobody cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. Is Fox still getting the numbers when it comes to viewership? Yes. Does Fox still have a lot of advertisers? Yes. And the reason the advertisers are not going anywhere is because the viewers aren't going anywhere. As long as Fox has the viewers, the advertisers will be there. They won't care until the viewers care. And the viewers of Fox News will never care. Okay, because they like being entertained and because a lot of them believe the lies, too. So they will continue to believe the lies even after hearing that they were purposely lied to. Okay, to be honest with you, I kind of like it. All right. If I tell you I'm lying to you and you choose to accept it, uh, you choose to stick around. That's on you. OK, you know the truth of the situation, but you would rather this lie. This is every one of future's disciples dreams. OK, this is the type of stupidity that toxic men hope to find in their women. All right. Rupert Murdoch said verbatim. Some of our commentators were endorsing it. The it being the lie that the election was stolen. And he said, I would have liked us to be stronger in denouncing it in hindsight. No, you don't, Rupert. You're lying. OK, you were going with what worked at the time and what worked, what got your viewers riled up was that the election was stolen. OK, you did not want them to denounce that because you were playing to the crowd. All right. And that's what your viewers wanted to hear. So that's what you gave them. In fact, the court filing said that Rupert Murdoch referred to some of Trump's 2020 election lies as BS and damaging. Well, you're the boss. <laughs> If you're the boss, tell your host that. All right. And if your host believe that, allow them to be able to say that. OK, by the way, Fox News, if that was the messaging that was coming from Fox News, that Trump's 2020 election lies were BS and damaging, y'all ratings would have been through the roof. That messaging coming from Fox News is way more powerful than coming from CNN or, or, or MSNBC. Okay, if that was the message coming from Fox News that Trump's 2020 election lies were BS and damaging, my God, y'all ratings would have been sky high. See, y'all were fueling the lies for ratings, but can you imagine if Fox News told us the truth about Trump? Do you know how powerful that would have been? That probably would have stopped January 6th from happening. Okay, those domestic terrorists, okay, that we dubbed Vanilla ISIS, Al Cracker, okay, they would not have stormed the Capitol if Fox News is telling the truth that Trump's lies were damaging and BS, okay? And the only thing more damaging and BS than Trump's lies is Fox News broadcasting and co-signing those lies like they were the truth. Please let Remy Ma give Rupert Murdoch, the chairman of Fox Corporation, the biggest hee-haw. Hee-haw, hee-haw, you stupid mother are you dumb. Hey, where, where my girl Chelsea Handler at? Chelsea Handler got something to say. Hee-haw, hee-haw, that is way too much Dan Mayonnaise. You think Kathy Griffin should say something? Please give this giant jar of mail the biggest hee-haw. <laughs> Chris Rock performing live in Baltimore this Saturday, first ever uh, Netflix stand-up special that's going to be live. Did you know that, Envy? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, I did. Okay. Cracker ass cracker. Oh, there you go. 
Oh, he was a little, little late. He was getting, little late. getting dressed this morning. That's all. All right. That's it? You ain't got one more? Who? My girl? That's <laughs> right, girl. <laughs> right. Hey, your beard looks stupid uh, on TV, bro. Shut up. <laughs> Thank you for that donkey today, man. Now, when we come do back... More, are, do you add more Beijing every morning? Like, you got to let it no, settle, bro. You, you don't have it's to, not. You don't have to draw it on every morning, bro. I don't. It's not. It's the fact that I don't have light. It's, I, it's I, what I, you I, seen the other day. I I'm in a hotel. There's no light. That's I, why it looks like that. I got to take a picture of this. They need to see. Don't cover it up. Don't, move <laughs> your hand, man. Please oh. move your hand so I can show our listeners what this is. All right. Bozema St. John Boy. will be joining us when we come back. You know she was uh, the chief marketing officer at Netflix. Uh, she worked with so many different it. brands, Are Uber and so many others. They gonna be able and we're going to kick it with her when we come back. Leave me alone. This is this is harassment. And, I'm going and, to and Human Bo Resources. And Bose, Bose has a new book out, too. She has a book out, a great book called uh, The Urgent Life. The Urgent Life. Yes. All right. Bozema, when we come back, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. So let's talk about the urgent life. Yes. Sir. My story of mm -hmm. love, loss, and survival. What made you write this book? I have had a thankfully successful corporate career. Mm -hmm. um, and there are always like big headlines, you know, where like I moved to this job and did this thing and the accolades and all kinds of stuff. Um, and I think that, you know, people assume that it's been an easy road and that, you know, I've just like sort of jumped around aimlessly. Um, but the truth of the matter is that you know, we all go through trauma, we all go through loss, we all go through pivots and things that make us feel uncomfortable. And I want to tell what has happened to me. For people you know? that don't know, give them some of the accolades that you that you did <laughs> and some of the careers and jobs that they do. <laughs> all right. Well, I am inducted into the Marketing Hall of Fame. Hey. Mm. Okay. Hey. Yes, hey. yes, Drop yes. Bomb for that. All right. And the advertising I've been the chief marketing officer of Netflix the chief marketing officer of Endeavor, the chief brand officer at Uber, the head of global marketing at Apple Music and iTunes, head of music and entertainment marketing at PepsiCo. So it's a couple been, jobs, couple you know jobs, I mean? couple Number jobs. Number one on Forbes, nice. the most influential CMO in the world. So wow. a few a few accolades. So where did you get your start for, for people that don't know? Well, in marketing, uh, I got my start with Spike Lee. Mm -hmm. His advertising agency, Spike DDB, is uh, here in New York. 437 Madison Avenue mm -hmm. and I started as, as his assistant uh, I was an assistant really... for Spike how was that because he moves around it's, he's always it's pressure, working it's pressure it's pressure speaking of an urgent life I'm telling right. you yeah. okay yeah well that maybe that was maybe even the first place that I saw that you can do a lot of things at one time and still like be locked in you know that he I mean, not just obviously directing but he's writing he's a father he's a friend he's a, a professor you mm -hmm. know he just did he ran an agency an advertising agency he was shooting commercials like he was doing everything at one time and um doing it all very well focused mm -hmm. you know not wasting time so it was so a very good you got start. your start with spike and yes and then i went to pepsico uh where i you know rose through the ranks and eventually uh ran music entertainment marketing there um most notably out of a few things i did there i uh, was on the team that negotiated the deal with the super bowl um the NFL for the Super Bowl halftime show and put Beyonce on that stage. Wow. So that was that was pretty dope. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Beats, uh, which was bought by Apple. Mm -hmm. And I ran and, well, I helped to form and create Apple Music uh, and, I, and then ran iTunes. It's and amazing. And yeah, I went to Uber and then, man, it's amazing. been a journey. How do you know when it's, <laughs> when, when it's time to leave? Because, you know, people always look at Bulls as like a hit woman for hire. Yeah. You know what I mean? You bring her in, <laughs> she does her thing, and then she's out. Like, yeah. how do you know when it's time to leave a situation? Uh, you know, I, that's a, it's a very individual question. You know, mm. it's like, I feel like a lot of times we know the things that you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? It's like your intuition, your gut. It tells you a lot of stuff. We don't want to listen. We just want to, you know, use logic and do pro and con lists and say, oh, well, you know what? No, I think it sounds better if I do this instead. Mm -hmm. Or you ask somebody their their opinion. How are they supposed to know? Mm -hmm. They never lived your life. They've never been in your shoes. They never had the journey. Maybe you respect them because of where they are, but that has nothing to do with you. And so for me, I've, I've always just listened to my own counsel, you know, and it's like mm -hmm. any other muscle. It's like the more you listen to your own intuition, the more you trust it, the more you go with it, even when it doesn't feel like it's the right thing. And you win, mm -hmm. it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So now I don't even, man, look, I walk into a room and know I'm not supposed to be there and walk the hell out oh, without apology. 
yeah, the all energy. the energy. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I could tell right away. I was going to ask, how difficult is it to get money for our culture? Oh. You know, because you, you talked about so many yeah, different brands yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah. was it, I, I'm sure it, it was a lot difficult to get money for urban, R&B, country and pop, Look, you know? Very, very difficult. Very difficult. There were so many times that um, I would be working on a campaign and know that like, well, this is the thing that's going to move the culture. But I didn't have any money to do it. Actually, one big notable one was uh, when I was working at Apple Apple Music. And um, I did a small little commercial, which became a, a hit, uh, directed by Ava DuVernay. Mm -hmm. At that point, she had only directed uh, Selma, obviously other things, but her most successful was Selma. But it was a commercial to show essentially the idea of playlists. Because at the time, it wasn't really something that people knew how to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't know how to engage. And so we had to show them that, hey, look, it's like a mixtape. You know, but you just, it's streaming. Mm -hmm. um, and so it starred Taraji P. Henson, uh, Kerry Washington, oh, yeah. and Mary J. Blige. Yes, yeah, yeah, I remember yes. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had $3 <laughs> <laughs> to make that commercial. You said $3? I mean, I $3, <laughs> yeah. I, I went to Ava's office, pitched her the idea, you know, said like, look, I don't have the money because we're using the money on Taylor Swift. Um, which is, you know, like, look, Taylor's big. So, uh, and by the way, the audience for that particular commercial was going to be for women like me. I mean, so literally, I had no money. I had to use a playlist that uh, Carl Cherry, shout out to Carl Cherry, who made for my birthday. Wow. That's the playlist we used on set hmm. to film the commercial because we just didn't have any money to do anything else. And um, I also scraped together some money to play it just one time on air. It was during the Emmys, and it was the first year that five black women were nominated for Emmys, and it was history-making. And so I was like, yo, I'm going to put... I'm going to put every dollar that I have for media for this one little commercial, I'm going to put mm -hmm. it on that. And so it aired one time, and the next morning, it was everywhere. I remember. So it was just, you know. That's so yeah, crazy. We don't have a lot of money for, for us, but it always hits. When you see some of these uh, dumb commercials, right? And do you ever <laughs> wonder to yourself, who let that person yes. speak for our culture? Always. Mm -hmm. Always. I am that person. I'll be at the cocktail party. Don't ever invite me over for dinner or a cocktail party. I will talk about this all day long. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be like, did y'all see the commercial where? You know what I mean? <laughs> because sometimes like it's The biggest so... one was like, I think Pepsi and, and Kendall Jenner. Oh, Kendall Jenner. I know. I know. Oh, it frustrated me so much. And because I've worked at a lot of places and because the marketing world is pretty small when you start getting to more senior levels, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, you know? So, you know, I called right over there. And the people who made it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, okay, so walk me through how this happened. <laughs> right. You know well, what I mean? What makes you think let, that was a good me, idea? Let me understand. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because I think sometimes also, and this happens to all of us in our work, sometimes you, we get really caught up. You think you have a good idea. You think something is really popping. And it's not until it hits outside mm -hmm. that all of a sudden you're like, oh, 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 wait, hold mm -hmm. on, hold on. I didn't, that's not what I meant to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so sometimes I give grace for those situations. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you know, I make a call. Always make a call. I'm always like, okay, now here's what we're going to learn yeah. from this experience. Mm -hmm. And I have to say also, it's like, look, the truth of the matter is there's not enough diversity in these rooms. We all know that. But the problem is that like, and you know, I'm going to say things because sometimes we get up in the room and then we don't want to make hires either. We don't want to bring other people with us. That's right. We like to be the mm -hmm. only one in the room. And so then how are you helping? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, it can't just be you. You're not all knowing. You're not God. That's right. And so even for me, it's like if I enter a corporation a company and i'm sitting at the table it can't just be me i don't have enough experiences i don't know what it's like to be a black man mm -hmm. you know and so it's like then you need other people so you need to make hires you need to advocate for other people to be at the table it can't just be you you're not the end all be all so sometimes i'm looking at the companies like why y'all not hiring more people of color and then sometimes i'm looking at people of color there and i'm like why are you not advocating for more all right we got more with bozema st john don't move it's the breakfast club good morning DJ NV Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking with Bozema St. John. Charlemagne? I think I know the answer to this, but what has been your toughest life moment to move forward from? I've had so many of them, Matt, honestly. But I would say that the one that caused the biggest pivot probably was uh, when my husband passed away. Uh, he died of cancer in 2013. Um, he was diagnosed and dead in six months. And it was just, it was just like, it, it was just so unbelievable. I mean, both of us, unfortunately, had not, were not strangers to cancer. Both of our mothers had had cancer, both survivors. My mom was on her second bout of cancer when my husband got diagnosed, actually. You know, mommy asked what type of cancer? It was Burkitt's lymphoma. What is that? Which is, it's like a blood cancer. Mm. It attacks your lymph nodes. 
um, and it was just it was like a strange thing you know it's like the doctor said it's like one in a million chances or something like that right um, but it was one of those situations where when he was first diagnosed it was weird because he was one of those guys that like was super healthy I mean he'd walk around in the city like winter time with like a sweater on you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like he wasn't a guy who got sick and so when he was diagnosed we were like okay what's the plan you know what's the radiation what's the surgery what's mm-hmm. the and they were like, okay, well, we can try a number of surgeries or we can try a couple of treatments. But within like two and a half months of the treatments, his oncologist just called us in and was like, look, there's nothing that's going to work. Wow. Mm. So y'all should prepare. And mm. we were both looking at him like, what do you mean? Like, we don't understand what you mean. Like, there must be something, some treatment, some. I mean, there was even a specialist who was based out of Texas that um, we, we called because I was the only person in the country who understood his kind of cancer. And there was nothing to be done. So it was really that moment that caused me to better understand urgency, you know, because like in my life, I've always been very spontaneous. I've always been very passionate. You know, Mm -hmm. if I feel something, I get an idea, I want to go do it right now. I've Mm -hmm. always been that way. But it wasn't until he was terminally diagnosed that I was just like, you know what? Like, I don't want to waste time for sure. I've never been that person, but I have to be more purposeful. I have to be more intentional. You know, it's like, if I want to do this thing, it's like, why do I want to do that thing? And I have to go and do it. Mm. You know, it's like, there's no wasting time. I don't want to hear anybody's excuses. I don't want to like, be like, oh, you know what? I just don't have the resources. Or I don't have the time or oh, I can't get to this. Work. No, it's like, yo, you don't have time to waste. And it's not like a morbid thing for me, you know, to think about like, oh, death is around the corner. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not thinking that and being fearful. I use it as a motivator. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, look, if, if I go tomorrow I am telling you I have loved this life Mm. I have loved every minute of it and yes I have big dreams and more aspirations and more goals but like man there's um I have in the book uh, there's the epitaph at the beginning of the book Mm -hmm. from an author Diane Ackerman who I really love and when I read the statement it just like expanded my mind because Mm -hmm. she says I'll, I'll paraphrase it's like she said um I don't want to get to the end of my life and just have lived the length of it. I want to have lived the the width of it. And it's just like, it just changed my perspective, you know, because I was thinking like, yeah, don't we all want years and years? You know, mm-hmm. you think like, I want to be 90, 100, 120 or something mm-hmm. like that. And I'm like, but what if you live that long and you haven't lived the width of it? Mm, what if really? like the energy and the excitement and the things that made life like worth it? Like, what if you haven't done any of that? And so that's why every day now I'm like, yo, I just, I want to, I want to be present. I want to be in the moment. Mm -hmm. I want to enjoy it. It's like, it doesn't always mean that you have to like climb freaking Everest, Mm -hmm. you know, but it's like, yo, I'm in this room right now with you and I'm going to enjoy the hell out of it. It's a, it's a great time. What a wonderful opportunity. Like, I want to remember this moment. What do you want people to get out of this book? Oh, wow. I'm sure there's so many different keys and so many different gems, but what's the main thing you want people to get out of? I think maybe it's, it's, it's really hope, you know, I think maybe that sounds so corny to say, but it's hope, you know, it's like, we live in such a tough world, man, you know, it's like, there's so much that happens to us, it's not like, you know, your husband or your wife has to die in order to, for you to feel something, like, it's like, there's all kind of losses and traumas and identity and friendships and expectations, like, things happen to us that disappoint us all the time, and... I think for me, one of the things that I want to be known is that none of that has to stop you. You know, it's like, I'm not saying that you don't have to pause and grieve the thing. Do that. For sure, do that. But you can't get stuck in the darkness. You know, there's um, a That's part that I talk, talk about. Right there. Yeah, you I'm telling tell you. you got a good therapist. Look, you get, look great therapist, <laughs> all right, for a long time. Absolutely. But the thing that I, I really um, think about hope is that sometimes it sounds like such a frou-frou thing. It's like, oh, you have hope. You know, it's like some pastor somewhere is standing on a pulpit and telling you, But I think of it kind of like an analogy of like light. You Mm -hmm. know, when they tell you like, you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel Mm -hmm. and you're thinking, okay, I'm in the darkness. Let me just focus on the light. I'm like, nah, man, have you ever been in a dark room where you had a light down there? Yo, you're afraid to walk from here to over there because you could trip on something. You could stub your toe. You know, you're kind of walking gingerly. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, the light is there and you know you can get out. But like, what's between where I'm standing and how I get there? Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm like, yo, I need to have the light on me. Like I need to be holding the light. I need to create the light so that it's like if you're in a dark place and you're holding the flashlight yourself, guess what you could do? 
You could point it down at the ground, look around, see what's going on, point it out to see what's coming. Like, it's so much better to be in control of it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by hope. It's like, look, if you're in a dark place, you gotta, you gotta create your own light. You know, what's the thing that's gonna pull you out? Don't depend on something external to do it. Absolutely. Well, Bose, we appreciate you for joining us. The Thank Urgent you. Life, my story of love, loss, and survival. Go pick it up now. Make sure you pick it up now. And thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It was nice to meet you. Melissa well, Breakfast Club, good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Pete Davidson. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I don't gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. What you talking about my guy for, man? What my guy in the news for? Well, Pete Davidson is trending and a lot of brothers are upset with Pete Davidson. You know why? Why? Because they believe his six-inch ding ling is with Ice Spice. That's what people are saying. There's rumors that Pete Davidson and Ice Spice are in a relationship. First of all, you really shorted that man's penis. All right? You said how many How many did you say? Six-inch? Nah. They said it was 10. Get, get that man his <laughs> inches, bro. Get that man his inches. All right? That could be the difference between a first down. All right? Get that man his four inches. All right? Well, that's your guy. Is he dating now? Come on. Put us on. You know that rumor fake, bro. Come on, man. Where did that rumor start from? The internet. The place where all lies start from. <laughs> okay? All, li all lies matter on the internet. All right? The internet is an all lies matter platform. Okay? All you got to do is put it on the internet and people will run with it. That's, that's, that's the era we live in. All right. Well, talk about putting something on the internet. We know Little Dirk has an artist. His name is OTF Duty. I know I didn't make it up. Duty Low is his name. Now, he wins 11 million defamation lawsuit against a young lady named AFTN Bay. Y'all with me? That's OTF Duty Low and FTN Bay. Now, what? FTN Bay acclaimed he sexually assaulted her son. What? Oh, I did yes. hear this story. No, I heard this story. Yes. So FTN Bay went on to claim that she took a lie detector test to prove her innocence, and it seems like she was wrong. So OTF Duty Low wins eleven million dollars against her. Is he gonna get that money? Does, does, I don't, I don't I'm know. Sure not. I don't. I don't know if she has this or not. But I don't know that brother. But congrats to him. You know what I mean? Congrats to him. He did exactly what he what he was supposed to do. That's what you do. You know, when somebody puts something like that, you know, on you. When somebody puts something like that on your, or tries to put something like that on your resume, you know, he handled it in the court of law. So salute to that brother. Now, he said, this was a long and stressful milestone in my life. Throughout the trials and tribulations, I stood tall after all the lies and backlash. Special shout out to his attorney who was up sleepless nights answering the phone any time of the night. I love my team and justice was served. So congratulations to him. Congratulations to that brother. I, and and he, I, I, I read somewhere where he said that he felt like he was traumatized and he probably is because when somebody comes out of left field, you know, and put something like that on you. You know, what happens nowadays is, especially on the internet, everybody immediately just rushes to, to say you're guilty. You know what I mean? They rush Correct. to accuse you of whatever it is, you know, you're, you're, is being alleged against you. So uh, I'm happy that brother was able to, you know, get, get, get that right in court. And not only that, I mean, besides that, like you said, can you imagine all the venues that didn't let him in? The schools that didn't let him perform. Man, he might the labels, I'm yeah. sure, that wouldn't let him do anything. You yeah. know, he couldn't make money, I'm sure, for the last couple of years trying to fight this. That's right. That's right. And, and by, by the way, it's going to be people that still stay away from him now just because. You know? All right. It's whack, man. It's the era we live in, though. All right. Well, congratulations to that, brother. And that is your rumor report. Now, Charlemagne, 12 noon today. What's happening? Man, 12 noon today. Tickets go on sale for the first ever Black Effect Podcast Festival that's happening April 22nd in Atlanta at Pullman Yards. It's hosted by myself and Just Hilarious. It's a day of live podcast, music, uh, great food. We got the Black Effect Marketplace where it'll be a lot of local businesses in Atlanta there, man. Uh, 85 South shows hitting the stage, horrible decisions, big facts, carefully reckless, reasonably shady, and checking in podcast with Michelle Williams, man. So tickets go on sale at 12 noon today on Ticketmaster, and you can go to blackeffect.com slash podcast festival to learn more. All right? All right. You got some tickets to give away? Should we just give away some tickets right now for people? You want to give away some tickets, Eddie? Let's do it, man. Let's give away some tickets to the Black Effect Podcast Festival. It's happening in Atlanta, April 22nd at Pullman Yards. Uh, if it, oh, and my guy Louis V is providing the soundtrack. Salute to DJ Louis, to Louis V, v. man. Louis V is providing the soundtrack. So if you want some tickets to go to the first 
ever Black Effect Podcast Festival, April 22nd in Atlanta. Uh, call us right now, 1-800-585-1051, and they're yours. All right. The People's Choice Mix is up next. It's the Breakfast Club. W- now, uh, today is March 1st, so it's no longer Black History Month. So we're not doing Black History Month moments anymore, huh? Nah, Black History uh, Month is over. It is Women's History Month, um, mm-hmm. you know, but we, we don't have a, a woman, a permanent woman on the show at the moment. Right. Okay. Uh, at the, all right. At, at the moment. Um, but I do want to salute uh, Nadra Glover Tawa, man. I'm going to be in conversation with her uh, tonight at 7 p.m. at the Bell House in Brooklyn, uh, presented by Cafe Con Libros. You know, she has a great new book out called Drama Free, A Guide to Managing Unhealthy Family Relationships. Uh, I'm, I, it's sold out, I, I believe it's sold out. So I'm really just saying that to say uh, I'll see y'all tonight at the Bell House in Brooklyn, New York at 7 p.m. in conversation with Nadra Glover Tawa, one of my favorite people uh, to talk to, an amazing, amazing, amazing therapist, man. So anybody out there who, you know, wants to hear some great conversations about mental health tonight are, you know, why am I saying it's like it's not so loud? For everybody that's coming, okay, you're going to hear a great conversation about mental health and her new book, man, uh, we all have to manage unhealthy family relationships, and that's what her new book is all about. So I'll be talking to Nadra about that tonight. All right. When we come back, we got the positive note. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, uh, I want to shout out to Tammy Roman. Tammy Roman has been doing so much recently, man. Tammy Roman hosts a show called Unfaithful, Caught in the Act, Unfaithful on VH1. And she's also on Miss Pat's show. And I mean, she's just out here working and grinding. So, shout out. Just wanted to salute uh, Tammy Roman. Salute to Tammy Roman, man. Tammy doing her thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, and I also want to I tell like- everybody, man, 12 p.m. today, tickets go on sale for the first ever Black Effect Podcast Festival happening April 22nd in Atlanta, hosted by myself and my good sister, Jess Hilarious, man. It's going to be a day of live podcast, music, food. We got the Black Effect Marketplace. You can see 85 South Show, Horrible Decisions, Big Facts Podcast, uh, checking in with Michelle Williams, and tickets go on sale today at 12 p.m. P.M. Go to blackeffect.com slash podcast festival to learn more. Tickets go on sale on Ticketmaster today. Okay, 12 p.m. All right, 12 p.m. today. Go to blackeffect.com slash podcast festival for more information. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Well, you got a positive note? I do have a positive note, man. And I feel like I need to say this this morning because I see so many people uh, getting stuck in this, man. It's a quote from Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs says, your time is limited. So don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Have a blessed day. Breakfast club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?